very glad to have Ben Antio Newley of Northwestern uh, speaking, and he's going to tell us about genus one curves in twisted projective space. Okay, great. Thanks uh, for the invitation, Ravi. It's it's nice to be here, and for the nice uh, email introduction yesterday or the day before. Um, so I'm going to talk today about some uh, results about the subject in the title of the talk. And there are things that I've been thinking about really with, with Asher Owl for, for a long time. And I've spent really more time than I'd like thinking about them with less, with really fewer, fewer things to show um, than I'd like. Uh, and so I'm, I just wanna, I guess I wanna dump some of that on, on you all. Um, so that's what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do today. Um, so, uh, so let, let me, explain to you the question that I want to think about. And first, I'm going to define what I mean by these twisted projective spaces. So um, specifically, these are Severy Brouwer vari varieties. So a Severy Brouwer variety um, is a smooth, proper, uh, or projective, uh, geometrically connected, I mean, some of these things are, are going to be <laughs> redundant given what I'll, I'll, I'll say in a moment. Uh, K scheme X, K is some field, um, such that when my base change to the algebraic closure, X becomes isomorphic to a projective space. This D, maybe I'll try it. This D, that's, okay, that, that was a little weird, but is the degree of X. It's the degree of the, the Severy Brower variety. That's just a sort of ancillary thing I'm going to keep around. Obviously, it's uh, one plus the dimension. Um, but because of relationship with things like the Brower group, it's a little bit handier to remember the degree uh, for me. Um, so, uh, you know, the motto is just that. Severy Brouwer varieties are twisted forms of projective space. Okay, after some base change, and in fact, you can even take it to be a separable base change if you're working over an algebraically uh, over a, over in characteristic p, it becomes isomorphic to projective space. Um, and uh, as a result, um, because we know what the automorphisms of projective space are, the automorphisms of projective space as a as a sort of scheme, the automorphism scheme of uh, D minus one dimensional projective space. This is uh, the uh, reductive group PGLD. And um, if you're not familiar with that, the, that's the projective general linear group. It sits inside an exact sequence. Uh, GM includes into GLD, and then it is the quotient. And this sends a scalar, a, a, a unit lambda to the diagonal matrix lambda on the diagonal zero elsewhere. That's the, exactly the center of GLD. We quotient out by the central subgroup, we get the projective general linear group. And that's the, that's the scheme, the automorphism group scheme of, uh, of projective space. And so sort of general formalism says that uh, the degree D, uh, degree D Severy Brouwer varieties um, these are in one by, to one uh, up to isomorphism. These correspond to elements of the non-abelian cohomology uh, set H, uh, H1 PGLD. I'm only going to really work uh, on fields uh, for over fields in this talk, but this would work uh, for more general base uh, base schemes as well. Okay. Okay, so. This is uh, what it is. Let me give a couple examples of these uh, before getting to the, getting to the question. Before popping the question to you all, so um, so what what's a what's a sort of typical uh, K? So if I look at C inside P two K, cut out by um, cut out by something like A X squared plus B Y squared equals Z squared. Uh, this um, where yeah, so this is a, um, and if this is smooth, <laughs> um, uh, then this, uh, this defines a Severy Brouwer variety of degree two. So in particular, it's a twisted form, CK bar is a twisted form of P1. 
Okay. So conic curves, smooth pro uh, projective conic curves, um, really any, any genus zero curve uh, is a severy brower variety. Okay. Another example that uh, you should keep in mind um, is if, uh, if A is a central simple K algebra of degree D, um, so this means that it's twisted form of, uh, so it's twisted, an atoll twisted form of D by D matrices. That, that uh, specific associative K algebra. Um, so then I can look at, I can look at the Severu Brouwer variety of A. This is the moduli of D dimensional of uh, D dimensional. Uh, left or right, left ideals in A. And that's a Severy Brouwer variety. Um, so the case here uh, is the specific case where I look at A is um, I take the associative ring in uh, two uh, associative polynomial variables and I mod out by the equations x squared is A y squared is b, and x and y anti-commute. Okay, so this, uh, if I take one of these generalized quaternion algebras, um, and I take the Severy Brouwer variety of two-dimensional ideals, this is a, this is a, a four-dimensional K algebra. Uh, if I take the moduli of two-dimensional left ideals, then I get uh, one of these conic curves. Uh, but over the over here, A and B hash should better had better be uh, units. Um, so that's uh, those are so, some sort of standard examples. Uh, these come up a lot um, in uh, I don't know arithmetic geometry, algebraic number theory, class field theory. I uh, will see some of that today. And now let me. Uh, let me explain the question. So these, these are just some basic varieties. They're, in some sense, they're the simplest varieties we can think of. They're, they're forms of projective space, but they're, they're a little bit more interesting than just projective space because they only become isomorphic to projective space after some atoll extension. But they're pretty basic uh, geometric objects. And now my question is, so um, if X is a Severy Brouwer variety, i.e. a twisted form of projective space, um, is there uh, a genus one curve C with a map C tax? Any map, okay, any map at all? Question mark. So that's the, that's the, uh, that's the question I wanna discuss today. Um, well, let's, let's look at the easiest example. Um, so uh, we can answer this at least in one, in one case right now, uh, right away. So in the, in the trivial case, so if x is actually um, p d minus 1 itself, then it's OK. OK. In fact, there are sort of two different ways that, um, that we can do this. We can either look at a at an elliptic curve sitting inside P2, and then just include P2 in all bigger projective spaces. Um, we could take a degree two cover of P1 branched at four general points, or, well, these have rational points. So we could just map any genus one curve to a point inside, viewed as being inside projective space, okay? So um, we, okay, so we see the answer is clearly yes, uh, yes, here. Um, more generally, it, it's a it's a pretty subtle question. Um, I'm going to give a reformulation in a moment, but now is a good time for sort of for first questions. Um, okay. 
Um, so the following reformulation is, is potentially useful um, and maybe is a little bit closer to how I typically am thinking about this. Um, so recall last time, recall up here that we saw that the degree D uh, uh, as in my algebra, the degree D uh, severi Brouwer varieties are given by this non-abelian cohomology set. And we have this exact sequence um, consequently, there's a, a boundary map from H1 uh, spec K PGLD to H2 spec K with coefficients in GM, and this is the Brouwer group of K, which classifies uh, um, central division algebras over K up to isomorphism. And um, the, 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 the kernel of this map, in other words, the fiber over zero in this group is, uh, is GLD. Well, of course, this is also a point because there are no vector bundles uh, that are not trivial over, over a field. And everywhere today, if I use uh, cohomology, it'll always be either ATOL or FPPF. And you can take it to always be FPPF uh, for this talk. Um, so the, the, uh, there's an abstraction, alpha x, um, called the Brouwer class of the Severi Brouwer variety. Um, and I'll also often just call that alpha. So this is the Brouwer class. And this is some abelian group. It's a torsion abelian group. Um, it turns out in, in, this, in this case that D times alpha is zero. So if we have the Brouwer class associated to a degree D as a degree D severi Brouwer variety, then D times that class is zero. So it just tells you a little bit about this. Um, now, uh, um, this question is equivalent to, um, so C maps to X if and only if, well, I have a structure. I have a structure map C down to spec K, and um, and so I can pull up this class alpha back. So alpha restricted to C is zero in the Brouwer group of C, which is H two uh, C G M, or this it turns out to also be equivalent to alpha restricted to the field of rational functions on C is zero. Okay, so there's a, what we're, another way to ask the question is if I look at um, the Brouwer class associated to the Severi Brouwer variety, I'm asking, is there a genus one curve that splits that Brouwer class where I pull back and I get zero? Now it's clear from this that um, if alpha is non zero, if alpha is not zero and C splits alpha in this sense, equivalently there's a map from C to X, then together these two things imply that C has no rational points. Okay, So that's why we're speaking of genus one curves and not elliptic curves. Why? Well, if it had a rational, if it had a rational point, the induced map on the Brouwer groups would be an, an injection. Okay, so it couldn't possibly kill any, any Brouwer classes, pulling back to C. Okay. So, um, Okay, so, th so that's, that's kind of what we want to know. Geometrically, we're interested in gen certain genus one curves sitting inside these arithmetic geometric objects, twisted projective spaces. Cohomologically, we're interested in splitting these, these Brouwer classes. Um, and so, okay, so now I'm going to tell you about what's been known uh, classically uh, about this problem. Okay. Oh, and I should I should probably give some credit to this question. Um, I believe that this has been asked by Pete Clark and David uh, Solomon. Um, although, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So let me explain uh, what happens in low degrees. So these are going to so, be relative. So, 
Please. Actually, man, let me ask, let me ask. There's a is that the way you phrase the question now that you've asked it explicitly? I feel like the answer should be always yes. But but is that is there is that the expectation or am I is there some secret? Is it? I not that I mean it's an interesting question because I don't know why it's always yes. But or is there some? Am I missing some insight that's suggesting there could be some? Obstruction no, that's working. I'm afraid to say there's no sort of gotcha moments, at least in this talk. Um, uh, I really mean this as a as a question. You, uh, I don't. I don't. You wouldn't bet money. It's not that you bet money that the answer should be always yes. Oh no no no! I, I'm a pessimist, so I would never bet money that any conjecture is 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 true. Right. Um, but uh, uh, <laughs> but um, no, but this one I maybe especially. Yeah, I'd be a little surprised if this were always true. Always true, the the evidence, as we'll see, is very special uh, geometrically in low degrees, and the arithmetic arguments I'm going to tell you about uh, that are that are Usher and my um, new contribution. Those are also very special, and um, to low degree. And so, you know, if, if it is true, it uh, well. I don't know. It's 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 for some reason that is definitely not clear to me at the moment. Um, let me just remark, though, by the way, that like, you know, if if oh, I should have said this. If yeah, right. Maybe I'll just I, I should have said this already. I'll put this right here. Mark, if X itself has a rational point, if if. If the set of rational points is non-empty, then X is already isomorphic to projective space over the field. So as soon as as soon as the Severi Brower varieties picks up a rational point, it's it's isomorphic to projective space. Um, <clears throat> so that's uh, yeah. Can you say why having a map from C to X is equivalent to this alpha being zero on C? Right. Um, well, if it, alpha pulls back to zero on x, um, so uh, if I if I if I pull this Brouwer class alpha back to x, it's become zero. So so one direction is clear. Uh, if if C admits a map to x, then it has to split the Brouwer class. Um, on the other hand, if it splits the Brouwer class, that means that over the generic point of C, there's a point of this Severi Brouwer variety because the, the Brouwer class being zero means that this central, there's some central simple algebra in the picture. It's isomorphic to a matrix algebra. In particular, it has a, a, a d-dimensional left ideal. That defines a point over the generic point, but C is a curve. So I, I can spread that map out to some map from the all of C to the Severi Brouwer variety. Thanks for the question. Any, any others? Okay. But note, I guess I just wanted to say note that like I can't just map C to a point because C is ge geometrically connected. So its image would have to be geometrically connected. If X doesn't have any rational points, there's just no way for that, you know, I can't just map to some single point um, if we're in the interesting case that there are no rational points. Okay, so let's enough about that. Let's let's feel good for a, a couple minutes here. Um, so let's look at the degree two case. Um, one of the problems with answering this question is is doing geometry on these on these twisted uh, forms of projective space. But um, okay, so um, so x uh, x is a degree degree two. Now. We want to do geometry, so we need an ample line bundle, <laughs> okay? But um, it's a twisted form of what? A twisted form of P1 in this case. What's the best we can do? So in general, there's no, there's no O1 on this X, okay? There's no line bundle on this X, which when we base change to the algebraic closure becomes O1. Okay, in fact, in this case, that's equivalent to having rational points. I'll, I'll leave that to you, okay? 
So, okay, that's a little bit troubling, but what does always exist is the canonical bundle. Okay, the canonical bundle is canonical. So it, so it descends, and, and in particular, the anti-canonical bundle descends. So there is an O2. Um, in particular, um, if you think of this as defining a as coming from a conic, I can just intersect the conic with some line and get an effective divisor of degree two. Okay, it, it's going to be it's going to correspond to a non-trivial uh, separable extension of the of the base field, but that's okay. So there is an O2. So what I can do is take two sections, take two uh, two uh, sort of general uh, members of the divisor class. Uh, I'll call those sort of D1 and D2. So that's, so then D1 plus D2 is sort of an effective divisor of degree four. And I can now take C to X to be the two to one cover branched at uh, D1 plus D2. And Raymond Hurwitz says that, um, you know, we do this uh, generally enough uh, that the genus of C is one. Okay. So that's one, you know, totally geometric way. It doesn't necessarily give you equations for this curve, at least without more work. Um, but that's a little bit of a flavor of how to do this in the degree two case. And I should, I should, um, credit uh, this, well, okay, so um, I'll do this up here. So these arguments are due to uh, sweats, um, but then in this sort of generality, I guess, uh, De Jong and Ho, and then in the degree six case uh, to Asher Owl in unpublished work. Okay, so we've got this nice, I mean, this is, this is, I guess I wanted to say this, it's an algebraic geometry seminar. There's an ample line bundle. I guess my job here is done. Um, so what about the degree three case? Well, this is even easier. So X is Wait, a twist. Can I stop you for a second, Ben? Please. So this is Jordan, hi. Um, so, okay, so you showed us how you can get lots of genus one curves covering this particular uh, severi brower curve, but does this kind of tell you which genus one curves you get or that any right. X you can get in this way? I'm trying to understand like what we what our conclusion is about degree two, like what we know and what we don't know. That's a good question. So it seems to be a pretty subtle. So you can ask uh, you can ask a bunch of questions. So 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 first of all, let's see. Um, you know, not every genus one curve will map to this because it's a special condition to split the sort of Brouwer class associated to this uh, to this Severi Brouwer variety. So. Um, uh, you know, that won't happen in general. You, could, you might ask about the following question, you know, is there for every J invariant um, a genus one curve whose Jacobian has that J invariant that splits the class? And that's something that um, David Saltman and Asher have thought about a little bit. I, I'm afraid I don't remember exactly what they've proven about that. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it, it's, um, I, I think in this case, it's clear that you get a surjective map onto the moduli of elliptic curves, right? Because clearly, the, as, you, as you vary these divisors, the J invariant will certainly be moving. Right. But beyond that sort of course information, I don't know what to say off the top of my head. That's a good question. It's a good and interesting question um, uh, that, that uh, yeah. Okay, so for P2, well, this is even easier. There is an O, there, it's, it's anti-canonical bundle um, is, an o, is an O3. Okay, so a general section is a twisted form of a cubic, right? Um, And hence it, right, so hence genus one. Okay, 
So that's a nice satisfying, uh, satisfying answer. Um, well, okay, so degree, you know, you're feeling pretty good. Uh, to, to, um, that's degree two, uh, degree degree three. Well, you might reasonably guess. So what, what you can basically do is you can twist the note, you can sort of successfully twist the, uh, the intersection of two quadrics. Uh, in P3. Okay, so, it, so a Severi Brower of degree four, that's a twisted form of P3. Now, now you can't generally twist the notion of a quadric because O2 doesn't descend, only O4 does. Um, but, it, but it turns out that by playing around, by some clever playing around with vector bundles, De Jong and Ho show that you, sort of you can twist this notion of intersections of two quadrics and those define genus one curves, okay. So, uh, so there are, you know, in other words, there's some, uh, there's some vector, I guess there's some vector bundle on P3 whose sort of general zero section cuts out, uh, cuts out some of these, these curves. Um, uh, degree five is sort of more, more, <laughs> um, more arguments with vector bundles that just get more complicated, but it's still pretty reasonably understandable. You should definitely consult their you know, seven page paper for the nice geometric argument. Um, but what's clear from this is that it's, it's getting harder, partly because the degree is going up. Um, uh, so, you know, that, that's gonna be, that's gonna be, uh, gonna be a problem. Um, let me just say one word about degree six, sort of you play around um, with, uh, what is this called, the Segre embedding, from, uh, let's see, P1 cross P2 into P5. And, um, uh, right. Yeah, that, that's due to Usher. Um, that's kind of the idea for, for this. Every, I guess, right, so every, um, every degree six, uh, Severi Brower variety has inside it a twisted form of the product P1 cross P2. So inside it, it has a twist, uh, a product of Severi Brower varieties. Um, and so you can start to use that to, uh, to solve this problem. So, and so, then so, but, above so degree. Then, uh, right. So the degree six is already. Uh, so did, did Asher, is this written down? I mean, this is like a. Very interesting question. Is this written down by him somewhere that no one knows um, that? Yeah. Right. No, not to my knowledge. Um, it, this appeared in a, I guess it was maybe announced in a talk uh, <laughs> uh, in 2015 at Banff. So possibly that uh, video recording can be tracked down. And I recall him, I think he gives the full argument in the talk. That's my memory. Um, and it, and it actually comes back to this question that Jordan asked about. See, once we have this, so you have some like X cross Y sitting inside Z. And, you know, X is degree two, Y is degree three. So there's sort of two curves mapping to them. And so you can split the class by a product of two genus one curves. Okay, that, that part of the argument is, is easy. And then they play, I think that they, I think he maybe exactly plays around with J invariant to arrange to be able to take C and D to be, uh, to have isogenous Jacobians or something like that, and then get down to a single genus one curve. But- um, so, so, so maybe to risk, uh, I, I don't want to distract you from your talk, right? except I do want to distract you since it's so interesting. But uh, the, the, so you have, you have a, what, you have a, like a six torsion Brower glass, which you take as a sum of a, Two torsion and three torsion, and this gives That's you right. the P1 and P2 presumably, That's and you true. take the product, and then you get them sitting in P5, and yeah. so that's and then that's the game. And now we're connecting to Jordan's question of you don't just want a curve; you want to be able to have enough choice so you can match them up, that's exactly uh, match the two of them up. Okay, got it. great. Yeah. And now the problem with seven is it's a prime number. Uh, you can't play this. Uh, you can't do this again. Right. I guess actually, to be fair about this question, I now that I think about it, I'll, I'll basically give a, a, a new 
a uh, different proof in this talk. So, uh, and, and this also suggests degree 10 might be attainable using two and five again, where you take a P1 and a P. Uh, right, that's correct. Except that the argument that he used, I think he was not able to control the degree five splittings curves well enough to make it. Oh, oh so he, he was already thinking about that. That's great. Yeah. And just in case for people watching on Discord, uh, <laughs> amazingly, Minshon has already gotten within seconds the link to the talk. Uh, so it's, I was going to say, how could you possibly find that talk? And the answer is, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I OK, <laughs> got it. I'm, and now, right, so leading to this, now, so, so we have complete, complete answers in low degrees and no answers at all in any degree higher than six. So bad news no complete answers in higher degrees. No complete answer in any higher degree. Um, and so, uh, okay, well, that's too bad. Um, what I'm gonna talk about today after a little aside here is, uh, well, where am I gonna make the aside? Well, I, I wanna explain how to, tackle the case of degree seven, and the same argument also works for eight, nine, and probably 10, and maybe 12, uh, over global, over the special case of global fields. Okay, so, um, uh, yeah. Now, okay, so that's, that's the end of what, what sort of complete answers, um, let me just make one quick remark. Uh, maybe I won't dwell on this. Um, so why genus one? Well, it just, it, it turns out that for degree reasons, genus one is the only genus that could actually split all of these classes. Okay. There are sort of, there are obstructions to, to any other given genus splitting all possible severy Brouwer varieties. So it's, yeah, so it's just, it's the only genus that works. And uh, that, uh, sorry, that works. And the reason is if, if C has genus G, then it has an effective zero cycle uh, of degree uh, degree 2g minus 2 and uh, but but x a, a severy brower variety of degree d typically um, only has zero cycles uh, of degree divisible by by d so in other words, so if C were to map to X, we would have to have that D divides uh, 2G minus two. Okay, yeah. so that's a problem. Okay, so this is sort of the only, this is the only case where we could plausibly split everything with this single class of, of curves, okay? You could ask variants of this question, like is every, you know, Severy Brower, I don't know. There are lots of variants of this you can ask, but that, that's maybe why we're focusing on this one. But there, there are, you could also ask about splitting by K3 surfaces or splitting by other things. Let me mention one theorem um, of, uh, of um, Ho and Lieblich. Uh, and then I guess there's an alternative proof in their paper given by myself uh, and Asher. So um, it says that uh, any X, any severy Brouwer variety X is split by a torsor for an abelian variety. Okay. So if you, if you don't worry about the dimension, then you know you're you're good, and we already saw a little bit of that when we looked at the degree six case, and we saw that we could easily split it by a product of two genus one curves, which is precisely a, 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 a 
a, um, a torsor for a product of two elliptic curves. Now, um, but like, let me just give you a sense of how unsatisfying this is, um, if I can find it. Yeah, like what's the best you can do? So best you can do generically for, uh, for, for degree seven, well, it, it would be a, a torsor for an abelian variety of dimension 235,299. And how do you get that? Well, you take an anti-canonical divide. You could just take, let's see, so this is P, the twisted form of P6. So you take five anti-canonical uh, divisors and take their general ones and take their intersection. Okay, it's a complete intersection curve of some massive degree. You look up in Peter Bellman's Hodge number calculator and figure out what the genus is. Um, okay, so and then and now and then you can take the Jacobian of this and it turns uh, of such a curve and it turns out that there's a torsor. Uh, for that Jacobian that also splits the Severi Brower variety. And it's really, it's pick one of the curves specifically. Okay, so, okay, that, I mean, it's a, that is a lovely theorem, but it is, it is still very, very far from the original question. Um, maybe one more just out loud remark. Uh, you know, you could ask about special, other special fields. Um, local, the case of local fields, every class is split by a genus one curve for local fields. That was known to Lichtenbaum in 1968. Okay, so, um, so the answer, I'll just write yes for local fields. Yes to the original question. <clears throat> so, uh, okay, so that's, that's, uh, a pretty reasonably thorough survey of what's known about this question to date. So, okay. so you're telling us we don't really need to know the why it's yes is not so relevant for us, just that. It's, it's not gonna be relevant for this talk, no. Um, well, basically, right. It, um, I guess the answer, I guess the reason is that what Lichtenbaum proves is that if any, right, if you have a, um, Right, so let's see. So if, if K is a local field, then the Brouwer group of K is Q mod Z. And uh, say E is an elliptic curve and C is a uh, H1KE. It's, it's an element of the Weyschadel A group that has order N. So it's the order, sorry, the order of C equals N. So this is some genus one curve. That this implies that C splits um, one over n in Q mod C. So that's that's the underlying reason for that. Uh, um, I mean, in some maybe that's in some sense the main point of that paper. Uh, so, <clears throat> um, and then I guess you have to think about why there are enough classes, you know, enough n torsion classes. Um, so let's ask, you know, as is common in math, um, instead of answering this question, which we can't seem to not be able to do, um, let's ask ourselves a harder question. And um, so for a field, um, if I look at the, uh, the map, the boundary map, well, the inclusion map from uh, the nth roots of unity, into H2 uh, spec KGM. Well, this is an isomorphism onto the N torsion subgroup. And so if I have a class here, I'll just write beta for the unique class that it comes from. <clears throat> and now the question I wanna ask now uh, is the following. Um, is there a genus one curve that splits beta? i.e. beta restricted to C is zero in H1C with, uh, sorry, H2C with mu n coefficients. 
Note the Brouwer group um, maps inject of C maps injectively into the Brouwer group of its function field, but um, but this map I'll do this in a different color, I guess. Uh, this is typically not injective. Okay. In other words, what I'm saying is that. I real for this question, it's really important that I that I ask over over the whole C, not just its function field. Okay, so I want to know does the does the uh, is there a C that that kills this um, this class in mu n cohomology instead of gm cohomology? So it's a harder, it's a provably stronger condition. And let me just um, Larry Sayre for a, for a second. Um, so if I look at uh, if I look at the map from C, well K bar to C, um, I can draw out a little bit of the Larry Sayre spectral sequence in mu n cohomology and GM cohomology. And um, sort of the main the the main uh, uh, point is well I have um, um, so sort of here I have H. So I'll do GM first. I have uh, H1 of uh, CK bar with coefficients in GM and then Galois invariance. And there's only one thing that can kill uh, the Brouwer group. Um, and there's only one differential. This is in the D2 page. So uh, what the image of this differential is exactly the elements in the Brouwer group killed by uh, killed by this curve C. Okay. And um, so what, in particular, what it says is that if I kill a class, then there's some reason that it means that there's a Galois equivariant, a, a Galois fixed line bundle on the algebraic closure that doesn't descend to the curve itself. And if we do the same thing for mu n, then what we get is H1 uh, CK bar mu n uh, G. Um, and this, uh, right, so, sorry, I, I should have read, this is pick CK bar G. This is the torsion in pick CK bar G. And this has a D2 differential to the mu n cohomology. And so here, the only way that I can kill a, uh, a class in mu n cohomology, if there's, a, if there's a torsion line bundle, that's Galois invariant, a torsion line bundle on the algebraic closure, that's Galois invariant, but doesn't descend to an actual torsion line bundle on, on C. Okay. So like one thing is like, it's clear from this that in order to split mu n cohomology classes, you have to have torsion in the Picard scheme. In particular, you can't do this if you're working with a, a Severy Brower variety or a K3 surface or something like that. The only way that you can uh, ever split the classes in mu and cohomology is, is if there's torsion in the Picard scheme. Okay. Um, now, the reason I actually was thinking about this for a totally different, uh, totally different reason. And I'll come back to that in a little bit um, for, a, for a completely different project. project. And, I, and I realized that this gives us a sort of fun way to, um, to try to split classes. So, um, you know, in the, in the arguments for degrees two through six, we started with a fixed Severy Brower variety and just produced by, by magic, by specific constructions, some genus one curve. The approach we're going to take now is a little bit different. We're going to produce a bunch of genus one curves that split some Brouwer classes. And then we're going to try to argue that that construction splits everything, splits, splits enough. So let me tell you, let me tell you about, um, let me tell you about that now. Um, <clears throat> Okay, that's a good time for questions. 
if there are any. Okay. So for us, or cyclic, I mean, or cyclic Severy Brower varieties, I guess I should say. Um, for the moment, all that we really need to, to know is that there's a cup product map um, from, I'll just write it like this, from Zn cohomology, H1 Zn, H1 mu n to H2 mu n, and then that maps uh, to H2 Gm. And so this takes a character chi and a, a unit u, at least if we're in the case of a field, a unit mod n, it takes it to a specific uh, Brouwer class, uh, which, which will be written chi comma u. Okay. And the Brouwer classes that arise this way are, are gonna be called cyclic, cyclic Brouwer classes. Now, these play a very special role so this is, I'll just mention this because we're in the, in the neighborhood. Um, major open question, is every degree P um, uh, Severy Brower variety cyclic in this sense, in the, in, in the sense that its Brower class can be written in this form where P is a prime? The answer is yes for p equals two and three and completely wide open otherwise. This is probably, I mean, arguably the most important open problem in division algebras or one of two, mo one of two such. Um, uh, but I, you know, who, who really knows? Uh, so these are the symbol algebras, symbol, symbolic because we can kind of write them in terms of the symbols like this. And, and these are sort of understandable. It's given by a character, a cyclic degree and cover and a, and a unit. So, um, you know, you can say, uh, say a lot about these. Let me mention that over number fields, over global fields or local fields, in fact, every algebra, prime or not prime degree is cyclic. Um, that's a major, major theorem in the global uh, in the global field case. Um, that's sort of the culmination of, of a lot of uh, work in algebra in the early 20th century. Uh, the theorem of Albert Brauer, Hasse, and um, Noether. So, um, okay. So let's, let's split some cyclic algebras. <clears throat> And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick, I'm now gonna start with an elliptic curve. With a fixed end torsion point. Uh, let's say P. So it generates a copy of Z mod N inside uh, E, okay? Z mod N subgroup scheme of E. And actually, let me call this elliptic curve E prime. Um, and um, and then uh, I get an exact sequence. So I get a, a degree n isogene, and the quotient will be e without the prime. And then the dual isogene will have kernel mu n. And in particular, I can write inside here, I can sort of write, if I, if I look at the n torsion in E, then uh, this quotient is C mod n. And this sends, for example, it sends one to P, our, our given n torsion point. Okay, so we're gonna start with this, with this picture. Um, so we're gonna play around with these cyclic isogenies. And, um, the, the, uh, there's, a, there's a boundary map from this picture. Um, really, it's coming from the, this extension, uh, from this group scheme. Um, so it goes from H1, uh, Z, uh, sorry, let's say spec K, Z mod N, to H2, spec K, mu N. And what it, do, it does is it takes a character chi, um, 
corresponding to a cyclic extension and sends it to chi comma u. For some u, u depends on the structure of the n-torsion subgroup scheme of E. So specifically what U is, is U is the boundary. So, uh, so I, get, I get this sequence zero to mu n to E n uh, to Z mod n. Oh, sorry, I probably should have done this. Uh, I'm gonna actually take rational points, right? So this sends P to U. So U is only a well-defined up to nth powers here. Uh, um, but there's an obstruction to lifting this chosen uh, n-torsion point to an n-torsion point of, of, of E. That obstruction is in H1 mu n. And what I'm telling you is that this boundary map in a tall cohomology is given by cupping with U. Sorry, maybe I should have written this chi, chi cup U, but, but the cup and the U kind of look a little too similar. Okay. Well, what's the point of this? Well, so the point now um, is, let me, uh, I just want that, that would be out of the way here. So the point of this is now I can use I can use this square and just functoriality. <laughs> and so this sends chi to some genus one curve, really an E prime torsor or C chi. And just by functoriality, lemma, or I don't know what, C chi splits uh, chi, uh, chi cup u. Okay. So it's a specific uh, genus one curve that splits a specific class. Um, Okay, nothing super fancy uh, so far. Um, now what we can do is we can hope that as we go around different elliptic curves and with, with different choices of n torsion points, we can find a bunch of different U's enough that we can split everything in sight. Okay. So let me talk about the degree seven case. So let me um, state a theorem. Let's see, so let's let D equals two through nine, um, X be cyclic, um, Severy Brouwer variety of degree D over a global field. And um, I think I need, uh, if D is eight or nine, I need zeta eight or zeta nine. Um, I need those roots uh, in the field for this argument to work. So then, um, then there's a, then beta 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 x is split is split by a genus one curve. So <clears throat> let me uh, let me uh, say something about the proof uh, for G, for d equals seven. All all of the cases are basically the same, just the explicit uh, general form of an elliptic curve varies. So let's consider um, this uh, elliptic curve. So this has a, has a uh, sorry, I can't. So zero, zero is a seven torsion point. So this will be our E prime lambda, okay. 
Okay, so there's a, this is a family of elliptic curves. Um, it, you know, lambda is it's only an elliptic curve outside some finite set of points, uh, just where the discriminance is non-zero. <clears throat> now, what can we do in this case? Well, we can hope to compute u. And it turns out that basically this was done by Tom Fisher a long time ago. And uh, extensions of his code, he sent me some magma code that let me do this for the other cases. So u, in this case, I'll write u lambda. In other words, that's the invariant that comes up uh, when, we, when we try to compute the obstruction uh, to lifting this point to e. Um, u lambda is uh, lambda cubed lambda minus one to the six. <clears throat> and so the corollary of this uh, sort of argument so far, I'm not saying we're done. I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't have written this corollary as it's in after the proof. I'm just, uh, corollary of what we've done so far is that, um, well, it's just that C chi, chi comma lambda, I guess, it depends on lambda, splits uh, the, the, any class of the of this form. Okay, so that's quite a lot of classes. And in my first sort of thinking about this, I then you know the problem is not is not every number has this form. You've probably noticed that. Um, so for example, what about chi comma p, where p is a prime number, and in the first iteration of thinking about this, I, I just did some computer searches with Sage to check that for about 10 to the fifth many cases, for each choice of chi and p that I could find, um, there was some choice of lambda that defined the same Brouwer class. And that's enough, right, to then split with a genus one curve. Um, I like this construction because if you really wanted to, you could actually write down equations for that genus one curve. Um, I mean, it would not be completely trivial, but it's relatively explicit. Ben? Yeah. Can I ask, is there, is that just some, if, if you say, okay, I'm, I have a target class, chi p, and I'm trying to hit it with chi uh, lambda cube lambda minus one to the six, so I'm trying to find some choice of lambda that gives the same class, is that some explicit Diophantine problem that you can write down? Like lambda such that. Um. Maybe, I did it by. Honestly, I, I feel like I got lucky. I did this via an explicit search, over some series of lambda that I knew weren't excluded, for some other reason, and then I just checked the local symbols, to see that they matched up. And it just turns out that, that it worked. So that's a separate phenomenon that's worth studying further, I think, um, because I'm not exactly sure why it always worked. Um, and, and very, yeah. So, okay, let me, I, I've just got zero minutes remaining. Let me just say, uh, let me say something about, this is clearly not enough to finish the proof. Okay, so we, we have to have a little bit more and so in this sort of picture, what we do is we keep chi fixed, but we change p. Um, uh, so what David Saltman then sort of uh, made the following suggested, suggestion. So what we do is we use uh, class field theory. So k is a you know, global field, so I go over all places, p, the, the, the uh, p completions of those fields, and then I have the symbol. There's exact sequences like this. And so what we can do is we can, uh, so any given class, chi u, has some set of ramification primes. So it sort of has some sort of support uh, at some places, p1 through pr. And so what we can do is choose lambda to roughly speaking, just be a product P1 through PR. This is say the principal case uh, where these are all principal ideals. Then it just turns out that the extension K and then the take the seventh root 
of lambda cubed lambda minus one to the six, this splits the class chi u by functoriality of this diagram. And the fact that it's totally ramified at each of these primes, okay, so there aren't, there aren't like extra primes sitting over them. Okay. And then there's a theorem of Albert, and this is what I just was unaware of from 1934. If this field splits chi u because it's a field obtained by adjoining a seventh root of unity, this theorem of Albert implies that chi u is actually what, it doesn't matter what chi and u are, it's some other character, chi prime and lambda cubed, lambda minus one to the six. It's a theorem in, in classical algebra. Okay. And, and actually because of that, we're done. So I'll stop there. <laughs>